would come to brief Earl Attlee uh, for his debate on prison officer pension age on Thursday the 30th of March. Uh, and we're very grateful to Earl Attlee who has addressed our conference. Uh, he's been a big supporter uh, of uh, PRY members. Uh, he fully recognises the difficulties of our work and that's why uh, you know, we've been campaigning to say that it's, it should be impossible for prison officers uh, to work to the age of 68 and we want some solutions to it and we want a negotiation with government in order to correct that wrong. In 2017 we had a debate in the House of Lords about overcrowding in the prison system and that stimulated me to take a very, very close look at our prison system um, and I've come out with some proposals for dealing with prolific minor offenders but other things became apparent. One of them was Friday release, another one was potting, both of which we've done something about to varying extents. Um, but the other thing that became really apparent is this issue of the retirement age. Uh, and with my experience of life and military operations, international aid operations and everything else I've done, I know perfectly well that it's totally impractical to be a prison officer and undertake those duties of being a prison officer at the age of 67. It just it is immoral, it's impractical, uh, and we see the effects because um, uh, it deters people from uh, having a full career as a prison officer. They might join the prison service, um, but then choose to leave, and we see very high turnover of junior prison officers because actually they realise this is not something they want to do for life. And what we really need to do is go back to having uh, people join the prison service and then have it as a full career and then retiring with a decent pension at a decent uh, age. What's happened is I've tabled a, what we call a question for short debate that will be debated uh, this Thursday afternoon. Um, in advance of that, uh, we've organised a meeting with um, peers, MPs, um, and the Prison Officers Association um, so that we can discuss the matter. Sometimes we ask the POA searching questions, why have you done this, why have you done that? Um, but on this issue, I'm very strongly uh, on side with the POA that the retirement age of 68 is not appropriate. But we looked at the issue, discussed it, um, asked some searching questions about why did we do this, why did we do that, in order that when I'm arguing with the minister in the, in, in the chamber of the House of Lords, um, I'm in a better position because I'm not going to get a nasty surprise when the minister says, ah, oh, we are, but what about this? Hopefully, um, I and my colleagues will, will, will know nearly all the answers. I've done military operations um, overseas in, in, in Bosnia, in, in the Middle East. Um, I've done run uh, international aid operations. But now I'm 66, and for the last two or three years, I, my body is giving up on me. I can't do what I used to be able to do. And if I can't do it, why on earth should I expect a prison officer to be able to do to deal with um, uh, an 18 year old who's got the cob on? It, it's just not practical. When we have the debate on Thursday, I do not expect the minister to suddenly cave in. More senior ministers have made it clear that they do not want to uh, open this issue up. And by applying continuous pressure to ministers. You can't get an immediate effect, but you've got to keep just keep pushing, applying the pressure, knowing that you've got a superior argument. And I am convinced that our arguments for, not, for having a much lower retirement age than 68, they are good arguments. I'm absolutely convinced about that. Our members have been quite clear on this issue. Conference policy is quite clear about uh, prison officer retirement age. Uh, and I'm very proud that, you know, we've got cross-party work going on. Earl Attlee has been, as I've said before, a very keen supporter uh, of prison officers and the PRA in general. And I think the reason he has been a supporter, a big supporter on pension age, is because he knows he stands on the side of right. Uh, and the reality is, um, whether it's Treasury, whether it's Ministers, I, I actually am an optimist. I think we can open that door uh, so to speak, uh, and I also believe even if the discussion then is in a closed room on a without prejudice basis, uh, I think that's an active step forward uh, so that we can put our case forward with the solutions uh, to the pension age uh, issue because it's not going away as far as this trade union is concerned uh, and we will raise it 
at every single opportunity so as we'd get pension justice. On the issue of cross-party, um, on this particular issue and, and many others concerning the POA, I work very closely with Lord Ponsonby of Shortbury, Fred Ponsonby, uh, and you'd be hard pushed to get a fag paper between the two of us on many of these issues, and particularly this one. I knew that I needed to engage with the Prison Officers Association, and I've actually absolutely loved it. Last year I went to a conference, uh, I was there for a few days, um, and uh, loved talking to the prison officers uh, in conference. Um, but best of all, um, they gave a, a, a warm welcome to my proposals for dealing with prolific minor offenders, even though it would be a very different way of looking after them, not using secure estate, but still using prison officers, um, which I believe is, is, is essential. It's not something that you can sort of privatise or anything. I'm not convinced actually about the merits of privatised prisons, as far as I can see. It's just a means of screwing down the... the uh, the terms and conditions of prison officers, uh, which is, to me, a sensible thing to do.